so as you can see on screen we have this video of Tyson Fury where he's giving his opinion of his performance against Oleksandr Usyk as well as the fight and the result and this has been a bit of a talking point over the past day or so because what Tyson Fury says in this video is an absolute load of tripe it is nothing short of delusions of grandeur and it just reeks of Tyson Fury trying to salvage his shattered ego. That's at least how I interpret it, because for so long, Tyson Fury was able to kick the can down the road and postpone and delay the Usyk fight. And the reason why he was doing that, not and this is my interpretation, feel free to disagree, but I never saw Tyson Fury being scared of Usyk. Tyson Fury is a, is a prize fighter. He gets punched in the face for a living. I don't think he really is scared of one man more than another. However, he clearly perceived Alexander Usyk as a genuine threat. And not a threat in the sense of, always oh, going to get really badly hurt. No, nah, it's not that. Tyson Fury's been doing this for yonks. He doesn't care about getting hurt or hit in the face. But he does care about losing. Because what does losing do? It damages your reputation. It damages your ego. And for the past couple of years we've seen Tyson Fury cultivate this cult following which has just been there with the sole, sole purpose of inflating his ego and uh, de developing this reputation of not only being the best heavyweight of his generation but also the best heavyweight of all time making out that Tyson Fury is some god amongst men he's some Goliath that is head and shoulders above all these other heavyweights when in reality and this was, you know, what any boxing fan who's rational and had their thinking cap on saw. Tyson Fury isn't this god amongst men. He's not this heavyweight Goliath. He's a good, talented fighter, but one in a very competitive era of heavyweight boxing, who's just as vulnerable as his contemporaries. But no, Tyson Fury was enjoying this very cushy position that he managed to uh, worm his way into and engineer this... this uh, reality of where he's being seen as one of the best heavyweights of all time and along with that came a lot of attention a lot of adulation i'm sure a hell of a lot of money where he was just able to mug people off fighting a tr tr trilogy fight of chisora on pay-per-view as well as a fight against a debutant in francis Ngannou. yeah he was loving it and all the while he's uh kicking that Usyk can down the road while while Usyk's taking on daniel dubois you know, his mandatory challenger and, um, you know, taking on live competition. And Usyk was, I mean, he's proven that he was a genuine threat as many of us saw him as realistically because he's a fantastic fighter and Fury is not unbeatable. He has plenty of weaknesses and flaws that can be capitalised on. And it's... Uh, We've all seen it. We've seen the fight play out. And a month ago, just over, Alexander Usyk proved that he was superior. Despite being older, despite being smaller, he proved that he was a superior fighter. And that's, that's hard enough for fighters to accept, you know, like forget Tyson Fury. Most fighters, they react in a similar way where they are trying to, they're salvaging their ego or they're protecting it while it's wounded because they've gone into the ring and they've lost to someone. And it's not just the physical damage, it's the psychological and the emotional damage. Spiritually, if you're way inclined, um, you're that way inclined. Um, I know spirituality is not everyone's cup of tea, but I always like to factor it in. Because when you go into the ring and you lose to someone, they prove to you and to everyone watching that they're better than you and as a man with an ego an ego is very important you know just go down a bit of a philosophical rabbit hole i believe that ego is a large part of the driving force for basically all men but particularly those who are at the top of whatever their discipline is you need a massive ego because especially in a sport like boxing where it's just you and the guy in front of you you have to back yourself to the high heavens because nobody else is going to do it for you yeah you might have ass kisses but when you're in the ring they can't do anything for you 
So you have to believe it. You have to believe that you're head and shoulders above everyone else. And so after a fight, when guys lose, they try and protect themselves by coming up with all these reasons as to why they lost, be it some kind of geopolitical uh, sympathy vote where, um, you know, you, you don't get a decision because Oleksandr Usyk, he has this conflict in his country and everyone feels so sorry for him. And so therefore he gets the rub of the green from the judges. But then when he does have moments of success, it's because I was having too much fun in the ring and it was really like boxing an amateur and I was having a great time. No, Tyson, you weren't having a great time because we can look at freeze frames from round nine where you were getting battered from pillar to post and you had the fear of God in your eyes because you knew that this could have been it. You know, you got knocked forward by like six or seven months to the new year. And so I don't, I don't need to describe this stuff because we know it's nonsense, but it's understanding why. And it's clear that Tyson Fury is just trying to salvage his ego because it was just blown up to astronomical proportions, his ego. And yeah, he got dealt a, a cold, hard dose of reality. Very painful one as well. And it's, um, yeah, it's potentially problematic because should the rematch go ahead in December, me personally, I just, I don't, see this as being a situation where Tyson Fury can benefit from doubling down and just, you know, being hard headed and you're like, you know what, I just I lost because of all these extraneous reasons. You know, Tyson Fury needs to use this as a prime opportunity to take it on the chin, pardon the pun, uh, swallow a bitter pill and go back to the drawing board and accept that he wasn't good enough. And that doesn't necessarily mean that if he ado adopts this kind of mindset that he wins. I will not be picking Tyson Fury should the rematch go ahead. Absolutely not. And that's even if he adopts that mindset. But it will give him the best chance because he can look at the performance, at the fight in the, the cold light of day and actually be able to take something tangible, something practical away from it that he can apply and hopefully get some more success. I say hopefully if you're a Tyson Fury supporter. Um, but that's what Tyson Fury needs to do, in my opinion. He doesn't need to continue deluding himself and just, yeah, carrying on with this, these delusions of grandeur. I don't think they're going to help him at all. But to be fair, as I say, it's not particularly surprising because, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And that obviously applies physically. Tyson Fury is a very big man, but the ego as well. It's reached such a, such massive proportions that uh, when the tiny Ukrainian middleweight came along, uh, just burst it like a bubble. And uh, it does make me wonder, like, because it's been a month, but a month's not really a long time, not really. If it truly sinks in how will Tyson Fury react because this is his first official loss and so it's out there for everyone to see that he isn't this guy that so many people thought he was he isn't this guy that he was trying to convince so many people he was we can we've all seen it you know you can watch the full fight on YouTube in case you forgot you know Tyson Fury has had to deal with that reality that he isn't the best and how is he going to accept that? How, are we already seeing signs of some kind of unraveling or downward spiral where he's going out on the lash? I know Tyson Fury's uh, no stranger to uh, necking a few bevies, but it does makes me wonder at least how will his very erratic character, uh, how will it process what's happened? But... Um, I guess we'll find out in the coming weeks and months. But yeah, those, that's my take. I think it's relatively straightforward. Tyson Fury was for so long trying to preserve his ego and now he's trying to salvage it. And that's why he's saying some very silly things. But uh, yeah, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you make of Tyson Fury's bluster? And uh, yeah, for now, thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.